chapter 31, section 5. 656 in the second edition. Okay, chapter 31, the final vision. Section 5, self-concept versus self. The learning of the world is built upon a concept of the self. Adjust it to the world's reality. It fits it well. For this, an image is that suits a world of shadows and illusions. Here it walks at home, where what it sees is one with it. The building of the concept of the self is what the learning of the world is for. This is its purpose that you come without a self and make one as you go along. And that's what I call the becomer, the collector in the mind, the seeker, comes to make one. And by the time you, you reach maturity, you have perfected it to meet the world on equal terms at one with its demands. And this is how we feel. This is what we tell ourselves as we're becoming another person or a better person, whatever that means to us, however that value is. We believe that we're doing it because that's what the world asks us to do. But, but isn't it actually what's structured up, you know, the classroom, the whole thing, all that religion? Is an, yes, all of that is an outward, outward thing. It's an outward picture of that thought system. So the constructs that you see are basically that really the ego revealing itself. So remember I said the ego always tells on itself, just look outside. Everything is a reflection of your thought. And everything that's being built up in the world is based on the ego's thought system, which is a state of becoming something that you're not. And then we feel as people, as these body identities, we feel that that we have to meet it with its demand, so then we make decisions based on that demand. I want to make that very clear, a demand. So we feel like we've been demanded. It's demanding us. That's the struggle. Exactly. That's the struggle. Yeah. Yeah, nothing short of a, short of a demand. Yeah, it's a demand. A concept of the self is made by you. It bears no likeness to yourself at all. The self-concept is made by you back here. And you are the light. It can, it doesn't, it's not like you at all. It's an image, the self-concept is. It's an image. Because the false cause. Right, the image maker in here, the image maker and the image are one in that sense. So a concept of self is made by you, it bears no likeness to yourself at all. It is an idol made to take the place of your reality as the Son of God. So any concept in your mind that you're struggling with, and you pay attention to how I feel, I seem to have mother problems, I seem to have wife problems, I seem to have marriage problems, you see all this, all of that is an outspring of the one idol, which is the ego, but the ego conceptualizes itself into compartments, come apart mentally. It's, so it's mentally come apart. It's fragmented. It's fragmented. So now I have all these specific conceptual problems, which are idols on the one tree, the one idol. There's one idol, but there seems to be all these different idols on the tree, the tree branches. Okay. It bears no likeness to yourself at all. It is an idol made to take the place of your reality as son of God, as the light. The concept of the self the world will teach is not the thing that it appears to be. For it is made to serve two purposes, but one of which the mind can recognize. The first presents the face of innocence the aspect acted on. So, the purpose, the, it serves two purposes, the self-concept that I have made. The purpose of being the hero, which now Jesus is calling another word, 
the face of innocence. It's the same thing. I'm a body that can be acted on by an object of the world. Demanded from a world. I'm being demanded. But see, this is back here in the mind. The mind splits it and gives it two purposes. The part that can be the part that I give away and the part I keep, the part that can be acted on. See, mind, cause, cannot be acted on. Mind is. Only when the mind believes it's a body that it can be acted on. You see? So, for it was made to serve two purposes, but one of which the mind can recognize. So the mind only can recognize one of them. The part that can be acted on. So we're getting at the idea of disassociation again, or forgetting. I forget what I've made. I forget that I believe in intellectual, I believe in stupid, whatever the concept is, and I've just given away a part of it. I kept the part that can be acted on, the face of innocence. Not real innocence, because real innocence is unabated. Innocence that can be acted on and have it taken away without my knowledge and my consent. The first presents the face of innocence, the persona, the persona, the aspect acted on. It is this face that smiles and charms and even seems to love. It searches for companions and it looks at times with pity on the suffering and sometimes offers solace and pity. This is what we're looking at here. This is deep. This is the part of mind that we're running from. It searches for companions and it looks at times with pity on the suffering and sometimes offers solace. It believes that it is good within an evil world. So this, this little face of innocence, this little private mind, the hero, it pets and looks for and says, Oh, you'll be okay. It's okay. Yes, you were you were you had your innocence taken away, but that's okay, we can forget that. You you let it go now. Not really realizing that let what go. The idea that I made it up. You see, it's false empathy. There's nothing innocent about it in that sense. Innocent makes whole. And it and then it reinforces duality. I am a real good person in an evil world when I'm really the dreamer of the dream. How could I be a good person in a world? In an evil world. And so you've heard things like, you know, the, the idea of perfect love cast out of fear. Perfect love cast. That's when you get to the bottom of that. Perfect love cast out of fear. Well, you see that. You see that there is only perfect love. And perfect love does cast out fear. I have an illusion or of, of fear, but it's an illusion. So we have to see, in order to be casted out, we need to bring it back to our mind. <clears throat> and see that... There is no evil world apart from my mind. Apart from me. Ideas leave not their source. You've heard that before. This aspect can grow angry for the world is wicked and unable to provide the love and shelter innocence deserves. And so this face is often wet with tears at the injustices the world accords to those who would be generous and good. So this is like the human condition. Who are these good people struggling with an evil world, trying to make it good, but really all along it's all thoughts in their mind and we're just making it all up. <laughs> so, and let's get into this. This is getting into the split. This aspect never makes the first attack. But every day, a hundred little things make small insults upon its innocence. 
provoking it to irritation and at last to open insult and abuse. Always some damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> The face of innocence, the concept of the self, so proudly wears, can tolerate attack in self-defense. For it is not a well-known fact the world deals harshly with defenseless innocence. No one who makes a picture of himself omits this face. For he has need of it. He has desire for it. The other side he does not want to see. Yet it is here the learning of the world has set its sights. For it is here the world's quote unquote reality is set to see to it the idle last. So if someone comes along and you agree with them, about the illusion in any way, then you just set up the world. There is no world. The world is in your mind. I've always found it kind of funny, this idea of society. Who is the society? What is society? What does that mean, society? Can you touch it? Is it a real thing? What, where does it end and when does it begin? Where does it start and where does it end? Why is, who, who is the society? It seems to shift and change wherever we go. Well, this person says that, and this group says this, and this group says it. So where is it? Who is it? Define it. You see. So it, if, if, it, we, it, if we agree... Then we make a collective, an agreement. The collective is a sickness. Because mm -hmm. there is no collective. There is only mind. And it's a, a commonly agreed upon thing. It's a commonly agreed, but if you notice, everyone says, don't do that. When you were younger, your mother would even do it. Don't do that, the neighbors would see you. The shame. Don't do that. The face of innocence. <gasps> Let's pretend to be these people, these puppets. These, let pretend to be something that, but there's all this weird, based on this weird idea of something that it seems to shift and change even. And no one can really even agree upon it because the more you start talking to the people, it all seems to shift and change. The agreement is then as well, I don't agree with that, and then disagrees. And then, well, let's war over that then. But it's just an idea. What I'm getting at here is, it's like the matrix. You need to unplug from the matrix, from the world, society. from society, the idea that there's such thing as a society. Society is an agreed upon, sick idea, which is the ego. It's a sick idea. It's a cancer in your mind. It's a cancer. Society is. So when you have society thoughts, worldly thoughts, well, I can't do that because this so-and-so and so, would, what would they think? That's a world thought. When Jesus says world, that's what he's talking about. That's how the ego thinks. It thinks through subject, object, individual mind, collective mind. Like Christian Murdy would say, you are the world. You know, he was just saying, you know, that it's all your mind. There's no inner and outer like you think there is. It's just a, an assumption in your mind. So Jesus says that right here at the end. Let me read that. Yet it is here the learning of the world has set its sights. Its plans, for it is here the world's reality is set to see to it the idle last. So the values, collective values, collective morals, ethics, all those things are there to set the ego in place. To make sure that the idol everyone's worshipping can last. Hmm. Woo. World. I will do anything for you, world. My, my God. Really, when you have fear and resistances, when you're afraid of how someone sees you, that's what you're saying. I'm not worthy, idol. What do I need to do now to, to praise you? What is it that you want? 